Merry Christmas everyone. Today is a very special day because we are doing the first session of our Ask Program is Q&A session. There were so many questions that we have had to break this video into two parts. This is the first part and the second part will come soon. So the first question is from YouTube and the question is by Govind Jha. He asks, you only publish one or two videos a week. Why is that? Now, we obviously want to publish more and more frequently and faster. But again, creating this content, designing the course and uh, shooting the video and then editing the videos takes a lot of time. We are a very tiny team of people working hard to make sure that this content is the top notch content that will be useful years and years down the line. So as much as we want to publish more videos, it does take time. So we are trying to speed it up, but I can't promise anything right now. So for now, we'll stick with two videos a week, but feedback taken. Yes, we are trying harder. So the next question is two related questions. So Lorden Mattel asks, is there going to be a Java app and video? And we also have a similar question on Instagram that says, will you be making a video series on uh, C++? Now, we are very uh, happy with the response we've got both from our Python and C apps and the Python video series. And obviously we want to create these series on C++ and Java and all other programming languages. But again, it, it's a very challenging task to create new apps and new videos. Uh, but definitely those are in the pipeline. We will uh, eventually go to these videos and these apps as well. But these might take a little bit of time. So the next question is, uh, love the content as usual. Are you Indian? Now, uh, I do look Indian, but no, I'm, I'm Nepali. I'm my, so Nepal is a country that borders India. Having said that, I have done my bachelor's in engineering from an Indian college called National Institute of Technology or NIT Kurukshetra. I also did my first job in Hyderabad in India and I also worked at a company in Noida. So uh, I have a lot of friends in India and it's a country that I really love and visit from time to time. So yes, uh, you know, I have a rich relationship with India but uh, I am a Nepali and our whole team is in Nepal and we are very proud to bring this world-class content from Nepal to the world. So the next question is how to find my area of interest as a first year student. Now uh, this is a great question because uh, even you know I can completely relate when I was in first year of college I was also very perplexed about uh, because there's such a wide range of subjects that are being taught even you know physics chemistry and organization behavior and economics and all these subjects so it can be really confusing you can feel you know okay I, I did not sign up for this I signed up for coding and why are they teaching me these subjects and later on I realized that uh, you know that there was a purpose to being so broad in first year because uh, if you're going to be a computer programmer, you are going to be building software for some field. You know, it can be uh, some economic theory or you could be simulating some economic theory or you could be writing calculus equations, uh, discretizing equations uh, for some simulation. So whatever it is, you know, you will be working with some domain and it's always good to have a little bit of domain knowledge on all fields. And that is why it can be really confusing in the first year. But uh, as you go to second year, third year or whatever, you know, how many years you have in your degree, things will become clearer. And I hope that if you keep on experimenting, if you keep on building projects, you will find that one project that really moves you and, and that, you know, sets the tone that, that makes you feel that, yes, this is what I want to do in my career. Uh, and you will find that, you know, it was for me, uh, I remember that moment was when we had an assignment on object oriented programming and I and my friend spent two or three hours continuously on one problem. We googled, we searched for solutions and then we devised our own solution. And that was the moment where I felt that, you know, okay, coding is for me or this is what I want to do. So you will definitely have that moment, but you will need to keep on putting that effort and building projects. Another question is, I am passing 12th this year. What course should I take or which exam do I have to take for becoming a professional software developer? Now, there's plenty of options. The most common uh, answer would be a computer science degree uh, in bachelor's. So, uh, you know, find out which college offers a bachelor's degree in computer science in your field. But I would also suggest finding mentors who you know in your family or friend circle who are computer engineers or software developers and asking them, you know, how they got to, the, to that point in the career. If you are trying to apply for another country, then find mentors in, in that country as well. 
So why am I focusing on mentors rather than online research is yes, you will find a lot of details online. You could say, you know, because the same degree can be called different uh, names in different countries. So in, in India, a typical uh, bachelor's degree in computer science is called a BTEC in computer engineering or bachelor of engineering with computer science. So there's so many different names and it can be confusing because there's also these other subjects like BSc, CSIT, which means uh, computer science and IT. Uh, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. So there's all these confusing names and it's always good to find a mentor who will clear it out for your country. So the answer would be, uh, you know, I can't really give you a concrete answer because it really depends on the country in which you are. If you're interested, you can also start self-learning. There's a lot of content out there. There's YouTube videos, there's articles, there's apps. So our Learn Python app is uh, a good starting point for beginners. Speaking of which, we are offering a 50% sale uh, for the holidays on our pro subscription so the sale will last till new year and if you get the pro subscription then you can also get a certificate at the end of the course now if you purchase the course it also helps us create more quality content like this so if you support our work then definitely you can purchase the app uh, i've shared the link in the description below so uh, the next question is from instagram uh, someone says i want to learn android i'm good at c but don't know java so can i start android now Definitely, uh, if you know C++, uh, because Java is also an object-oriented programming language, a lot of the concepts in Java will sound familiar to you. Also, there's a lot of good documentation on how to build uh, Android apps using Java because that was how initially all Android apps were built. Now, having said that, uh, there's also other options like Flutter for mobile app development. In fact, our Learn Python and Learn C apps are also built on Flutter. So you might also want to explore these more modern platforms as well because they will allow you to build not only Android apps but also iOS and other platforms. Now the next question I'm moving on is can you please also start making project based videos that include small and big projects by Arno Academy on YouTube. We will definitely take your uh, suggestion into consideration. In fact, this is something that is already in the pipeline. So we are planning to make project based videos in the near future. Watch out and subscribe to our channel so that you get to know when that has starts happening. Now the next question is related to competitive programming. So first question uh, about that is Ayush Rathod asked on YouTube how to start studying for competitive programming and Avantika Anand says is it okay to make mistakes in the beginning when you're starting out with competitive programming. Now I have similar answers for both these questions. Uh, how to start competitive programming? Just jump into it because there's a lot of platforms out there that help you build, you know, start your competitive programming journey. If you feel that, uh, and, and you know, you don't have to be an expert to start competitive programming. So just apply, uh, you know, sign up on these uh, competitive programming platforms like Code Forces, Hacker Rank, and uh, Code Chef, and you know, just start as a beginner, start solving beginner level questions and slowly upgrade yourself to the more difficult and more challenging problems. You will definitely get there. It's not too hard. Now, in terms of making mistakes, if you see a baby trying to walk, then you will see that they make a lot of mistakes. It's very similar when you're starting out with programming or especially with competitive programming, you will definitely make a lot of mistakes. But always remember that as you learn to walk, as you learn more and more concepts, you will stop making those mistakes again and again and you will be more focused on the algorithm rather than the syntax. So that will be a nice jump and definitely don't worry if you're making a lot of mistakes. Those mistakes will go away once you become more and more comfortable with the syntax and the patterns that come up regularly in competitive programming. The next question is also related to competitive programming. So uh, Mohammad Tamim Sarwar Nijhum asked from Bangladesh, Sir, I am from Bangladesh, my age is 12. And I'm learning coding from one year. Wow, congratulations. So I know a bit of Python, C, C++ and HTML. I want to get involved in competitive programming, but there is no good competitive programming sites for my age coders. If there is any site for me, please tell me. So uh, Mohamed Tamim, you've actually found yourself a gap in the market. And who knows, you know, you could be building that platform that you see that there's not in the market. And definitely you, you have asked a very valid question, you know, are we building any competitive programming sites, especially for beginners who are starting out and, and who are uh, of a younger demographic than average coders? And this is the direction that the world is going in. So definitely, I, I don't see any competitive platform that is specifically designed for uh, kids of your age. But again, you know, you can go to the existing competitive platforms 
and make sure that you do only the ones that you can handle and I would love to see a competitive programming platform you know customize themselves for your use case now the next questions are a bit related uh, so one question Samrat Chawla guy asks I'm a beginner what programming language should I learn first and Ashish asks love the videos would programming help us branch to other IT related fields now the first question uh, which programming language should I learn is is a tricky one because you know every programming language has some use in some field so it's really hard to say that one programming language is better than the other however the typical answers uh, which are C and Python and JavaScript I would definitely recommend Python because it has a very simple and you know fluid syntax for beginners that uh, that is easy to get started with uh, programming and then you know I, I always suggest don't learn just one programming language start with one master it go to another try another because once you learn two or three programming languages you will be able to better decide which is the better programming language for the project you're going to do so I always encourage experimentation but again if you're starting out I would recommend a programming language like C or Python or JavaScript moving to the second part of the question definitely you know learning programming will help you branch out into uh, different IT fields so I myself started as a software developer and uh, when I started I did not know which field I would specialize in as I started doing uh, professional and personal projects I realized that I, I was really interested in web development and that is why I built my expertise around Python and JavaScript but yours could be a different case you know you might start out as a software developer and then realize that artificial intelligence is the field that excites me the most or internet of things I like robotics I like combining hardware and software so maybe internet of things or maybe you could want to go into cloud computing or you might want to do some other field you know you might want to combine an economic theory with some computer simulation and you might want to do all sorts of things so it really it's an exploration that you start and then you will find your calling automatically so don't really need to worry too much about that just start with coding and slowly you will find what interests you more and I suggest that you experiment a bit uh, instead of going for just one field or deciding on one field because when you're just starting out it's things are not very clear and you will find your passion eventually now the next question is Sandeep Kudupudi asks on YouTube is full stack, full stack developer simple to learn for freshers so basically a full stack developer is a developer who knows a lot of things uh, about software development they, they can do back-end work they can do front-end work they can also deploy code to a server so full stack development is not for everyone because you know a full stack developer has to be very flexible with what they want now the world there's a lot of demand for full stack developers these days and a lot of people are switching to full stack development however I would suggest not to start with full stack development immediately uh, if you're just beginning first start with either front end or back end or you know start coding uh, competitive programming start just one thing and eventually you if you feel that you know this flexibility of doing back end work on one day front end work on another day deploying code to the server or another day if this flexibility is what you want then definitely full stack developer is a good choice but if you're the kind of person who likes specializing and you know, if you say I want to be a machine learning uh, developer or if I want to be a data scientist then you know you might not want to be a full stack developer so it really depends on what is your calling and what interests you more and what is the demand in the market and that de really depends on where you live and what is the demand in the market in that place as well so start exploring if you're just learning to code then again don't you know decide on one field experiment with everything build projects related to data science machine learning build a mobile app build a game build a web app try everything and eventually you'll find one field that you really you know that really excites you so let's see what's next so the next question is does your neck hurt uh, TOEFL sad GMAT wants to know on YouTube uh, I know I move my neck a lot uh, while making the videos but that's just a habit and um, no my neck doesn't hurt it's totally fine and I hope uh, you don't make a meme out of this uh, fingers crossed so the last question is your website is beautiful how did you create it 
Now you can go to a website called archive.org and look at the first version of programmies when it was launched in you know 2012 or 2011 2012 and you will see that it's not as beautiful as it is today in fact look at the initial version of uh, any website you know the big websites that you see and you inspire you're inspired by and you will see that they started out as ugly pieces of design and uh, that's that's the process of uh, you know building anything innovative you start with something something simple and you keep on improving the design however in uh, in the last few months you must have noticed that a program has got a complete design overall that was because we spent many months uh, you know looking at the design from scratch from a usability perspective and really looking at what problems does our website solve for beginners so really putting the beginner programmer in in my at the top of the mind we really invested a lot of uh, uh, energy time and energy into building a beautiful website kudos to sirish sikrakar who is our designer he has built who has done amazing work for us and if you see any perfect looking product uh, you know the, if any beautiful project product you always have to remember that there's some people around it some people behind it who have built it so uh, yes, the program is uh, product is beautiful. I, I love it myself. The current design is really easy to use and It's because we spend a lot of time building it and if you're looking for more technical details uh, So our website is built on Drupal and we love Drupal. It's it's what program is was built 10 uh, 8 years ago on so it's the same platform, but we have upgraded it a lot That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did uh, now, as I mentioned before, we could not cover all the questions that you asked. So we are definitely going to do part two of this Ask Programming session again. If you want to be notified of when that video gets released, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon so that you get notified when that video comes out. Stay curious and I'll see you in the next one.